You should be nicely warmed up. We are going to work through some Pilates moves focusing on legs, bottoms and core muscles. And we will start, as I often do, with the shoulder bridge. So lie yourself down, taking your feet hip distance apart, tucking the arms in by your sides and just turning the palms of the hands to the ceiling, having the head in the centre. So we're going to take a breath and engage the core. And as you breathe out, squeeze the bottom, tilt the pelvis. Feel the lower back press down. And then start to peel the spine away, vertebra to vertebra. Coming up as high as you can, ideally up to shoulder blade level. Take a breath. And then as you breathe out, we come back down again, laying the vertebra down in the correct order. Getting that middle part of your back down before your lower back, lower back down before your bottom. And just keep that going at your own pace, checking the core is engaged, squeezing the bottom, tilting the pelvis, curling up gradually. And then as you're coming up, to, up and down, focus on the rest of the body. Are we keeping the shoulders back? What about the toes? Are the big toes down, the little toes down? Want to keep the weight even through the feet. And just check those knees aren't going any wider. Quite often when your lower back is a little bit tight, you tend to push the knees out a little bit wider to accommodate the tightness. So let's work to keep the knees narrow. So we improve the movement of the spine about spacing out the vertebra so each joint articulates well with the next. So we're going to do four more of those. Keep it nice and slow, you're not in a hurry. Closing your eyes, just visualize what the back of your body is doing. So you've got two more of those. Finishing your last one. Once you are down, you're going to take the arms out wide, cross that right leg over the left leg. So you sort of wrap the right leg around. Take the knees over to the left. Left hand comes onto the knee and you draw down. And it should feel a little bit warmer around the back of the body. So we release to the back, to the bottom, to the outside of the thigh. back to the middle, change the legs over, left over right, knees go to the right. So right hand comes to the thigh, we draw down. Same thing, if you feel it release, take it a little further, but just settle into the twist. Gently come back, undo the legs. And we've got the feet hip distance apart again. Just make sure your pelvis is lying level, so we're not tilting up, we're not tilting down. Your hip bones and your pubic bone are lying at the same height. And then we take the heels to the floor, but lift the toes. And just imagine that your feet are on thin ice. So there's no force going down through the feet. Take a breath, engage. 
as you breathe out, you're going to float that right leg up without pushing into the left leg. And then inhale to lower down. Exhale, lift the left leg without pushing into the right. Inhale to lower down. Just do a few of those and check that when you switch from one leg to the other, there's no shift of weight from one side to the other because your core muscles are taking the work, are taking the stability through the pelvis. Now, if that feels enough for you, you carry on with that. If you want a little bit more, we lift one leg up, breathe in. Now, as you breathe out, that leg is going down, but the other one is coming up. Exhale to lift, inhale to change. So we'll do that a few times through. Again, making sure pelvis is level, lower back is comfortable. If you feel this through the lower back, go back to the single heel lift. And just check what's happening through the rest of the body. Is your jaw tight or your shoulders tensing? Let's try and keep that all steady. Keep checking belly button to spine, pelvic floor drawing up, holding in place. So you've got four more to go, making sure those thigh muscles are doing some work, abdominal muscles, particularly those deeper abdominal muscles. Two to go. Finishing your last set. And then once you are done, bring the knees into the chest and rock the back. So we're gonna come back to that in a moment and make it a little bit more challenging again. But for now, come back to our bridge. So feet hip distance. Again, upper body is relaxed. This time, instead of curling through the spine, we're gonna look at the strength in the back, bottom and legs, and we're just gonna do a hip lift. So we take a breath, engage, breathe out, squeeze the bottom, lift the hips and then come down slowly. Same again, squeeze the bottom, lift the hips, and come down slowly. So do that a few times, don't worry about curling through the spine. Just think about the strength to the back of the body. And then next time you lift up, you're gonna stay up there. So we're maintaining the height, and without moving from side to side, without letting the bottom drop, just lift your right heel, lower it down. Left heel, lower it down. And what you don't want here is cramp in the back of the thigh. So just make sure you are activating the muscles in your bottom and the core muscles. So we're not just loading the legs. Now you can stay with those single heels or we can make it more continuous as one heel lifts, the other one is going down. But again, try not to move those hips. So belly button to spine, pelvic floor pulling up. Keeping that going nice and high through the hips. You've got four to go. Four, three, two, and one. Come down slowly. And you should feel like the back of the body has done a little bit of work. Bring the knees into the chest, hold on to the legs, and we rock from side to side. Just releasing the back. Come back to the middle, place the feet to the floor. So you've got feet hip distance apart, arms tucked in again. We're gonna come back to the heel lift. So imagine that your heels are on thin ice. At no point can you put any pressure through those feet. So from here, take a breath, engage. As you breathe out, as we did before, float the right leg up, and then inhale, carefully put it back down as if you're lowering to thin ice, and then same with the left. So this is your easy option. See how that feels. Make sure you are keeping the pelvis level. Nothing is changing with the position of your lower back. And if that feels okay, you feel you want to give it a go and, and make it more of a challenge, you can float both legs up together. Make sure the back stays in its neutral position as you lower the heels back down. 
So we exhale up, inhale down. So we've got quite a few more of those to go. We're really targeting the lower half of the tummy now, but if you feel it in the back, go back to single legs. If you know you're tensing through the upper body, you can always put that block behind your head. And just keep going. So you might want to do a few double heels and then do a few singles and then back to a few doubles. So you work with this as feels right for you, right for your body. So we've got four more of whichever one you are doing. Finishing your last one. I think I may have lost count there. <laughs> Hopefully you did more, not less. Bring the knees into the chest and just rock the back from side to side. Pop the feet down. You're gonna bring yourself up to sitting and then we're gonna lie down onto your left side. So if you're on a mat, sit the bottom back towards the back of the mat. So when you lie down, you can line up your hand, your arm with the back of the mat, your bottom with the back of the mat. So we're holding a straight line. Having the feet together and just take that top hand onto your bottom so you can make sure that we're using those muscles. Now you can either rest your head on your hand or if you want to, you can put a pillow there to support the neck a little bit. So we engage the core and then when you're ready, Lift that top knee, keeping the feet together, and lower down. Lifting up, and lower down. And we want the muscles to fire in the correct order. So it's core muscles first, then the bottom, so feel that side of the bottom activate, and then the leg muscles. We try not to do it all just with the leg. Anytime your neck feels uncomfortable, you could rest your head into your hand. You do whatever feels right for you, as long as this leg keeps going. Now, if that's feeling enough, you keep going with that. If you want a little bit more, next time we lift the leg up, stay there, place the hand to the floor. So we're gonna lift the foot, we're gonna bring the top knee down to meet the bottom knee lift up and then bring top heel down to meet the bottom heel. So a little bit more rotation within the hip joint, a little bit more work for the bottom, I hope. Keeping that going. So all the time you are rotating, check there's no change in the position of the lower back. You're not suddenly rolling forwards or rolling back. We keep that going. Well, I can definitely feel it on this side. I hope you can too. And then next time we lift the leg, we keep it up. I'm just going to pulse the knee towards the elbow. We won't do many of these. Keep going. I think we can do eight more for eight. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one. Release it down. Well done. Give the leg a rub. So we're going to stretch out that side, bringing yourself up to sitting. And you should know which leg you just worked. The leg that did the work, cross it in front. So right leg is in front. But if a cross leg position isn't for you, straighten your left leg out and just bend that right knee. And wherever you are, we sit up tall and then walk the hands forwards, just letting the head drop, shoulders down. And you should feel a stretch around the hip, into the bottom, into the outside of the thigh where you've just worked. Slowly uncurl. Undo the legs, let's shake the legs out. And then we're gonna come up onto your hands and knees. So you've got shoulders 
over wrists, hips over knees to start with, and look ahead of you. It's really tempting to look down at the legs, but I want you to keep looking forwards. If you're on a mat, make sure you're towards the top edge of the mat. So again, we engage the core. You're gonna slide that right leg back, just tuck the toes under, and then bring the right knee back underneath. Same thing with the left. Just keeping that going from one to the other. And as we did when you were lying on your back, you don't want to move your pelvis. And it may be that this is enough for you today. If you want a little bit more, we slide the right leg back. And then we slide the left leg back to join it. Slide the right leg underneath. And then left leg underneath. And then we lead with the left, lead with the right. Bring it in and down. So just keep going, whichever one you want to do. But checking the pelvis stays level. And make sure, particularly when you lift that second knee, that your bottom doesn't lift. So you're not a tent, you're a plank. And each time you lift that second leg, you should be aware that those core muscles are working. The next time you end up with both knees off the floor, stay there for four, three, two, and one. Place the knees down. We've got one more of those to go. Core engaged, one leg back, the other leg back. Look ahead of you, four, three, two, and one. Knees down, sit the bottom back, let's take rest. And if you want to stretch out the wrists, fingertips to the floor, and just push those wrists forwards. And then we're going to lie down to the right side and do our oyster or clam or whatever you call it on the other side. So lining up everything with the back of the mat, feet together, take the hand to the bottom so we can just check that those muscles are working. Taking a breath, engaging the core and when you're ready start to lift that top knee and then lower down. And you may be aware that one side is very different to the other. Mine definitely is. So if this is your weak side, just persevere with it. Maybe go a little slower. And checking that we've got core muscles, then the bottom, then the leg. Time. You're not comfortable with your head on the arm, you can have it on a pillow, or you can lift the head. So you can just keep going with that. Or if you want a little bit more, let's lift the knee, take the fingertips to the floor for balance, and then we lift the foot. We go knee to knee, come back up, heel to heel, come back up. Keeping that going, you may find your rotation is better in one hip than the other. Mine isn't very good in this side. It's all a little bit tight. Check again on the alignment of the pelvis. So we don't want to roll forwards as you do this. The lower back maintains its neutral position. more of those. Next time you lift the legs, stay there. And we just take that little pulse towards the elbow. So you should be feeling it about now, same as on the other side. You like to work both sides of your bottom so your clothes fit you properly. more, in fact not a couple more, more than that, 
four more now. Let's do four, three, two, and one. Release it down. Well done. Give the leg a rub. Gently release. Bring yourself up to sitting, and then we'll take our stretch again. So, it can be left leg crossing in front, or left foot tucking into the right leg. Whichever feels better for you. Sitting up tall, lengthening your spine, and then coming forwards and letting the head drop. So if you're in a cross leg position, you may feel it in both sides. It's just an extra bonus stretch. And go a little bit further. Slowly walk in, undo the legs, shake them out, and then release and roll down onto your back. So coming back to our focus on those deeper abdominals one last time, let's check pelvis is lying level, upper body is relaxed, head in the center. Take a breath, engage, breathe out, float up the right leg, float up the left leg. Let's just stay with a steady breath. Breathe in. As you breathe out, you're extending both legs straight up into the air. And as you inhale, bend the knees back. Same again, extending up. And then bringing it back. So a few things to check here. Neck and shoulders stay relaxed. If they're not, try putting that block behind your head. Rib cage should lie flat. You don't want to feel that you're flaring the rib cage forwards. And check again that your pelvis is staying steady. So going up to vertical is our easier option. So if you want a bit more of a challenge, we can start to go a little bit lower. And you play around with this, you can go quite low, as long as you don't feel it in your back, but also the, the muscles in your bottom don't take over. If you go too low, it no longer becomes the core doing all the work and the bottom is doing some work. So play around with the height and see what's gonna work best for you. So anytime your back takes over, we take the legs higher. Next time you extend the legs to whichever height you're working on, stay there, point the toes, and we can start to swim. Not breaststroke, make sure it is a front crawl kick. We keep going. Now the idea is the legs are trying to make you wobble. The core muscles are trying to stabilize you. So see how you get on. And if you want a little bit more, take the hands behind your head, lift the head and chest, and just keep going. You've got eight to go. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one. Release it. It's quite hard to talk and do that. I'm normally walking around looking at you all. So just rocking the back into the floor. And then we place the feet to the floor, step the feet wider than the mat, take the arms wide, and just move the legs from side to side, a bit like windscreen wipers. So we're just loosening out those hips, stretching the hip flexors. Next time the knees go to the right, stay there, and just let both legs be heavy concentrate on that left leg, easing the knee down. So we're stretching out front of the hip, front of the thigh. Come back to the middle, we're gonna change it over. Same thing, legs are heavy, ease that right knee down, and just find that stretch into the front of the hip.
Gently release. Come back to the middle, feet together, knees together, rocking the knees from side to side, just releasing any last bits of tension. And then we gently take the knees to one side, roll the body over, bring yourself up into a comfortable seated position. Sitting up tall, interlink the fingers, push the palms to the ceiling, take a big stretch, and then let it go. Hopefully we've worked your bottom, your legs, your tummy a little bit, so you can carry on with your day. Well done.